A seat is reserved for every South Carolina player on Saturday morning before a home game. They receive a challenge from their leader, Coach Lou Holtz, the magician who has molded six separate schools into championship caliber teams. His final test here is to capture the SEC East crown and sustain the excitement he restored to the Palmetto State, something he accomplished over the past two years after this team did not win a game in 1999. This season, more than ever, expectations are high and the team is running wild, all part of the grand plan from the leader. Winning was symbolic to the Georgia football team for the many decades that culminated in their only national championship in 1980. Now coach Mark Richt is here to rekindle the bulldog bite that was so successful in Glory's past and to end a 20-year drought in which the Bulldogs have not won an SEC title. The sky is the limit with the SEC championship and South Carolina in its path. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. There is a certain rhythm to this sport in the South. There is a magnetic pull attractive enough to cause more than 80,000 folks to gather in stadiums throughout the Southeastern Conference. Today, the site is the williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, and the homestanding Gamecocks, led by their quarterback, Corey Jenkins, greeted by family and friends as the Georgia Bulldogs come to town to take on the South Carolina Gamecocks in an SEC battle. Georgia opened its season two weeks ago by defeating Clemson 31-28. South Carolina won its first against New Mexico State but fell last week to Virginia. Now they come home for a very important early season SEC battle against Georgia. Gamecocks on the field first, Georgia Bulldogs second. And good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge. We welcome you to Columbia, South Carolina, our second game of the season. And Todd, kind of interesting this early in the year to say how significant this game is for both these teams. Critical for both of them. For Georgia, this is a team with tremendous expectations on them. And I guess you could say the road to the SEC championship starts for them in Columbia because this is a team that they've lost to two years in a row. Two years ago, they came in here to Columbia overlooking the Gamecocks, got beat. Last year, they took them seriously, got beat again at home. They must win today. For South Carolina, this is a team that's one and one, but they haven't played very well yet. Seven turnovers in the loss to Virginia. This is a team only had 15 all of last year. The silver lining in that loss, all the mistakes are correctable, and it wasn't a conference game. The real season starts today. Well, the South Carolina Gamecocks are led by a mature young man at quarterback. Corey Jenkins grew up in this city, played four years of minor league baseball, two years of co junior college football. Back home, he is a senior now, starting for the first time. He's living a dream, yeah. but it almost turned into a nightmare in, in the game last week. Well, he's mature in age, but not mature in experience as a starting quarterback. And so far, kind of a mixed bag. Now, he can throw it. He has a very strong arm, but he's better as a runner. He's elusive and very, very powerful. Now, the problems he had last week, four turnovers, four decisions, trying to force a play, trying to make something happen instead of just playing the game. The coaches uh, have told him all week, play hard, play aggressive, but in order for us to win, you as a quarterback must be more responsible with the football. Georgia, they have a quarterback situation. Mark Rick has two guys that he believes in, and he's committed to playing them both in the football game. David Green last year was the freshman of the year in the Southeastern Conference. But as you can see in the win against Clemson had his worst game of his career. 
So they bring in DJ Shockley, the redshirt freshman out of North Clayton, Georgia, and he brought an immediate spark to the Georgia offense. He played two series. In one series, he threw a touchdown pass, 24 yards to Terrence Edwards. Another time, he ran nine yards on a broken play into the end zone, and this is what Shockley brings to the offense. He can make things happen when the play breaks down. We'll see how Mark Rick handles his quarterback situation today. All right, Todd, this game and every game each Saturday brought to you in high-definition television. We are in between storms here in Columbia, South Carolina, as these teams get set to meet for the 55th time. South Carolina has won the last two, never in a series that began in 1894 have they won three in a row. Georgia won the toss, and they will receive. Terrence Edwards, Fred Gibson of the deep men, this is Gibson who had a return against Clemson for a touchdown of 91 yards. And this one he moves out to the 36th yard line where Georgia will put it in play first down and 10. And time now to introduce the third member of our commentary team. Let's go down to Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, it rained hard here last night and this morning. It stopped now, but we're expected to have some rain on and off throughout the game. There's a line of thunderstorms on its way. We were hoping it would wait until the second half, but it looks like it's coming here quickly. Now, they just redid the drainage system on this field, so the playing field should be just fine. And Coach Holtz told me that he said he will stick to the game plan as expected, rain or shine. All right, Jill, Georgia has a first down and 10. Musa Smith in a tailback. Green going deep, left side. They'll test him early. And it's Fred Gibson with a huge gain on first down. This doesn't surprise me at all because with this weather coming in, Mark Rick and the passing game, they want to get off to a good start. It's single coverage. Gibson, a very tall receiver at 6'4", going against Teddy Crawford, starting at corner at 5'10". Perfect throw by David Green. And a great start for a Georgia offense that only gained 203 yards in their opener against Clemson. That is a gain of 52 yards in the first down pass. High formation, Smith is the deep back, gets the toss, a block, and he cuts down to the 10-yard line, Musa Smith. And the tackle made by Jermaine Lemon. David Green gets the start. He was the freshman of the year, as Todd said, in the SEC last year. Had a very poor outing two weeks ago against Clemson. We got knocked around, too. I mean, it wasn't all his fault. In that first half, Clemson knocked him around. And that affects any quarterback. We saw that affect Rex Grossman last week. Second down and eight, three wide receiver set. Damian Gary and Gibson off to the left. Terrence Edwards split right. Little different look by the South Carolina defense here. Smith plunges inside the five. That'll be short of the first down. And let's check the Alamo starting lineups now. First of all, with the Georgia Bulldogs. Offensive line, it is a good one. Stinchcomb, Jackson, Knight, Breedlove, and Marshall. Seniors across the board. Musa Smith, J.T. Wall in the backfield. Edwards, Gibson, the wideouts and Benjamin Watson is the tight end. Another place on the field here, down by the goal line. Keep your eye again on Fred Gibson. He's six foot four, basketball player, can jump up in the air, particularly if he gets on Ted Crawford again, the shorter of the two corners for South Carolina. There was confusion coming out of the huddle, and JT Wall turned around and said, We're not certain what's going on here. So they burn a timeout. We'll return to Columbia in a moment. Storm moving in. It's third and three at the five. Keep an eye on Fred Gibson. He's up here at the top now again. He's working on Teddy Crawford, who's 5'10", making his first start at corner. Green looks that direction. Knocked down at the goal line. It'll be fourth down. Rashad Faison. An all-SEC candidate, number 11. A big stop. Green was looking for his tall receiver, Gibson, on the slant route. He's throwing inside, and South Carolina does a nice job getting their hands up. Lance Lowry, number 48, the middle linebacker, got a hand on the football. And South Carolina with a big stop. Again, with weather coming like this, you want to get on the scoreboard as soon as you possibly can. Uh, DeAndre 
Island also may have been a part of that. Now here's Billy Bennett who had a 43 yarder to win the game against Clemson and a sideline warning has been issued to the Gamecocks and the weather moving in. Bennett from 22. Jonathan Kilgo the holder. And the junior from Athens Georgia now two of two for the season. Georgia strikes first to 22 yard field goal at the end of a 59 yard drive. Took two minutes and six seconds and Brett Kerouac getting ready to kick off. Well it is really windy in this place right now too. Wind is going to definitely be a factor throwing or kicking the football right now. You can see the the flags and people putting parkas on or, or rain gear and the wind is uh, really picking up. We've got a little lightning going on. Well, it rained heavily overnight, as Jill said uh, at the outset of the game. And we had this window, which caused the optimistic among us to think maybe we're going to dodge this. Here's the kick by Kerouac, taken three yards deep. And Jason Faraby will bring it out. Let's go back and take a look at the opening play of this ball game. Todd. Well, Charlie Strong started with the safest call he could make. Three deep, rush three, and all three guys are dropping into deep. You can't get beat deep when you're playing three deep zone. You have to stay as deep as the deepest receiver, and that time Teddy Crawford just got caught looking back at the quarterback and allowed Fred Gibson to run by him. You start with a safe call, hope your defense makes a good play, and you get beat when you shouldn't get beat. Andrew Pinnock. And Dacus Terman are going to open in the backfield. Behind Corey Jenkins. Hand off. Pinnock picks up a quick five out to the 30-yard uh, line. 26-year-old Corey Jenkins grew up in a home that's less than two miles from the stadium. As we said at the uh, beginning of the broadcast, spent four years in minor league baseball. Then two years at Garden City Junior College. Game here, backed up Phil Petty a year ago, and now he is the starter. And he's a different kind of quarterback, has a linebacker mentality. This is Taz Robinson, a speedster, getting his first start today. The freshman redshirt from Lyons, Georgia, tackled by Chris Clemens. The offensive line for the Gamecocks. The best of this bunch is probably the left tackle, the only junior, that's Cavell Wharton. Robinson and Pinnock in the backfield. Michael Ages, Matthew Thomas, and Ryan Brewer moves to a wideout. The strength of this South Carolina team is their offensive line. It's a good unit. And they've got a 250-pound tailback and a 220-pound quarterback who actually plays like a running back. They're going to make the Georgia front seven play a physical game today. Now Jenkins out of the spread. This is more a running set than passing. And Jenkins to the 40-yard line. Gentrell Curry, Thomas Davis with the tackles. Georgia defensively gathers Sullivan, Golston, a true freshman, David Pollock up front. Two outstanding linebackers in Boss Bailey and Tony Gilbert. They are joined by Chris Clemens and the secondary to Corey Bryant, Thomas Davis, another freshman, Kentrell Curry, and Bruce Thornton, the junior. A lot of quick throws in Excuse this me. offense. Quick screens, little quick throws out or throw it deep. They don't do a lot of intermediate throwing. Boss Bailey's coming on the blitz. There's the handoff. And Andrew Pinnock is stopped. It'll be third down at the 40-yard line. Boss Bailey is an explosive player. He's 6'3", 230, 235 pounds. But he can move, plays out in space real well, and uh, did a nice job coming off the edge on that play. And tackling Andrew Pinnock is a little bit like tackling with a little Brahma bull. I mean, he is a big, big man. Pinnock checks in at 255 pounds. Third down, six. Jenkins. Nice move to the right. First down at the 48-yard line. That's where he can really hurt you. 
Well, you know what? He made a good decision right away. That was his problem last week, some bad decisions. What? He wants to throw to his left. It's not there, so quickly he says, run it and protect the football when I run. A very quick decision, and that's what Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator, wanted out of Corey this week. Be decisive, make the plays, play aggressive, but be smart. And that was a good, quick decision to a run for a first down. Near midfield with the first down, Jenkins this season, a 5.2 yards per carry average. And this is an official timeout. There's a chat going on near the South Carolina. You know, they, they may be talking about if lightning is nearby or how far away it is. I'm sure people in the South Carolina program are in touch with uh, the weather. Now there is a wall of rain that uh, looks to be no more than a half a mile away from the stadium. Poor Jill. She has her galoshes. <laughs> First and ten. At the 50 yard line. Here's the toss. Robinson popped, loses yardage. Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker. Well, he missed half of the first game against Clemson. He went out with an ankle injury. And he was kind of uh, joking that, you know, Boss Bailey got a big jump on him in leading the team with tackles because Bailey had 14 tackles and Gilbert only had four because he had to sit out the first half. But this is a guy who has led the team in tackles the last two years, a very physical inside linebacker. Second and 13 after the loss of three. Green. Screen pass right side, nobody there. As Golston drifted out defensively and got in Pinnock's face. Another good decision by Corey Jenkins to throw it away. Now he hurt himself because he gave the screen away too quickly. When you throw a screen as a quarterback, you need to take a drop and set and really sell it to the defense that you're looking downfield. And he started drifting back and showed screen right away. And there was a flag. This is Steve Shaw, our referee. And this could be another conversation involving the weather. No. Nope. Here it comes. This is uh, on the play. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage, therefore we cannot have an eligible downfield. There is lightning in the area. We will suspend play at this time. Both teams go to the dressing room. That is the safe call. Yeah. Especially if you're wearing a wireless microphone. Like, like that guy making the call down there. But no, that, that is the smart call. All right, we were told that this uh, wave of storms was going to arrive at 4 o'clock, nine minutes early. Unlike most airlines. Yeah. So a weather delay here in Columbia, South Carolina. We are feeling the effects of Hannah Steve, Storm. Please stay tuned to radio stations B106 FM for updates. Game is sure at the goal. And of course, uh, as many of the fans as possible advise to leave and go underneath. Yeah. And as soon as we have any idea how quickly they expect this storm to pass through, we'll. Uh, Let you know, Georgia with an early lead, 3-0, and play suspended because of lightning in the air. Well, more than 80,000 gathered at williams Bryce Stadium on the campus, or close to the campus of the University of South Carolina. And uh, among those taking refuge during the rain delay, didn't improve his looks any. No. Still handsome. Nice. Handsome as ever. <laughs> what a, a great mascot. Oh, the ice is off. Oh, he's close. <laughs> Classic. Long as the vodka is not uh, alongside. Third and 12 or 13 make it officially. You know, strategy-wise, you know, it's tough to call play third and 13, but if I was South Carolina, I'd try to take a shot deep down the field. Everybody's been sitting in the locker room warming up. You haven't run a play. 
If you don't make it, you're going to punt the football on fourth down anyway. And if it is intercepted, it's deep down in their territory. So wouldn't be surprised to see Corey Jenkins take a shot deep down the field. Third and 13 as we get underway once again. Four-man rush for Georgia. Jenkins will run. Gets a good block from Pinnock. And will be brought down short of the first down at the 43-yard line. Tackle made by Boss Bailey, number 45. But again, I think the thing that Skip Holtz has to be happy with with his quarterback, Corey Jenkins, is he's being very decisive so far. When he's making a decision to run, there's Skip right there with the headsets on. He's making good, quick decisions. And the fans booing a little bit here, but this is a good move. Bringing in a punter. And it is his pooch yep. punter, Joey Bowers, who specializes in the short placement of punts. So fourth and two. And Georgia alert to a fake. They're not in a punt block. They've got four linebackers there. Bowers. Yep. One hopper to Damian Gary, nailed at the 15-yard line. Jonathan Martin, number 30, one of the starting linebackers. Fine special teams play. And an effective pooch punt. Yeah, effective and pretty good decision by Damian Gary when he saw he could field it cleanly because if he lets it go, it maybe bounces inside the 10-yard line. He at least gets it out past the 15 for David Green and the Georgia offense. 30 yards on the punt. Georgia will go from an eye formation with David Green, who hit one of 52 yards on the first play from scrimmage a little less than an hour ago. Hand off Musa Smith across the 20 out to the 21 yard line and into the arms of Lance Lowry, number 48, along with Langston Moore. Musa Smith ran for over 100 yards in the win against Clemson, but all the offensive coaches were talking about, we need Musa to be more productive. We need him to finish runs better. You see what he did last year. Very productive in those first five games, and then the injuries really messed him up the rest of the way. Suffered a groin injury in the midst of game five. Here's Musa Smith. And this time he puts his shoulder pads down at the 30-yard line. Got an additional two yards. That's a pickup of 10. And that's what they want to see him do. Lower those shoulder pads and finish the run. Now he gets a great block from J.T. Wall, his fullback. But watch oh, Musa at the end of the play. Lower the shoulder and fall forward for about four more yards. And that's Rashad Faison who made the tackle, who's an excellent tackler for South Carolina, but not as big as Musa Smith. Now the chain gang a little slow in resetting the first down markers. They get them set now. Gain of 10 for Smith, first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Green inside pattern to Gibson gets a great block and weaves his way left chased by Faison and out of bounds. My what a block he got just about the point of contact. One of the things when you throw screen passes in college football you can get your lineman downfield as long as the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin Breedlove with the nice block. You get the lineman downfield, and you get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And again, very smart by Mark Rick. Gibson was quiet last week, a little upset he didn't touch the ball more. They're getting him involved right away. That's the second catch for Gibson. Here is Musa Smith, hit at the line and driven down. Lost yardage. Back to the 49-yard line. Langston Moore, who has been an outstanding player at the nose guard for South Carolina. Let's check the Gamecock defensive lineup up front. Dennis Quinn, who had two interceptions against Georgia two years ago, along with Moore. Here are the three linebackers. And uh, in the secondary, Robinson, Faison, Island, Jonathan Martin, and Ted Crawford. Second and 12. A little different look now. South Carolina showing a cover two, two deep safeties. They don't show this very much. Running play, Smith gets a good block from J.T. Wall. But a uh, nice defensive surge by the Gamecocks, and Musa Smith is down at the 45-yard line. DeAndre Island made the tackle. This is a little different. You see two deep safeties. Normally, it's a 3-5-3, but watch at the snap of the ball right before the snap. They're going to kind of move out of it and sneak this guy up in here to stop the run. 
And that brings up a third and nine at the 46 yard line. Mark Rick, second year head coach at the University of Georgia. Stunts by the defensive line. Green got it. Langston Moore again. He's the anchor of this Carolina defense. Georgia had a heck of a time trying to block him last year with Kurt McGill as the center. Ian Knight, the new center, and two plays in a row. Langston Moore makes the play. Watch Langston. Ran a little twist, and he came inside, and they just didn't pick him up. Breedlove trying to pick him up on the twist, and a good quick move off the ball by Langston Moore. That brings up a fourth down, and uh, Jonathan Kilgo is on to punt. Chavez Donnings is the returner, and he's uh, pitched his tent at the 17-yard line. Here's Kilgo time in out. his fourth season, and time has been called by South Carolina. I think so. South Carolina wanted to try to go after that punt, and for whatever reason, they didn't either have the right people on the field or the right situation to do that. That is Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator, who's letting his feelings uh, yeah. be known. Well, Charlie's defense the last two years has been outstanding here at South Carolina. Now they're off to a little bit of a slow start. They've actually given up an average of 29 points a game in the first two games. And they were, have been one of the top one or two teams in the conference in scoring defense the last two seasons. Got a lot of young guys, and you got to remember, this is a team that lost last year. Kalimba Edwards, who was a high draft pick of the Detroit Lions, both corners, Andre Goodman and Sheldon Brown, both drafted, both on NFL teams. Willie Offord, the, one of the Spurs, was drafted, playing, started for the Minnesota Vikings on the opening day. So this defense had to replace some, some key, key players. Well, Langston Moore and Dennis Quinn were the two who were uh, conversing with Charlie Strong, listening, I think, more than conversing. He's also the defensive line coach, so those are his guys. And he also thinks that should be the anchor of this defense because that's where he has the most experience. Back to play now. Kilgo on fourth and long. And Donnings awaits it now at the 10-yard line. Number 43 is the key guy, Brandon Schweitzer, in terms of punt block right over the middle. Kilgo gets it uh, free. There's a flag down, a fair catch made at the 10 yard line but an infraction of some sort back at the line of scrimmage procedure call so that'll bring the punting unit back on the field for Mark Rick's team Illegal formation. Yeah. We could hear Steve Shaw in the background. They didn't go after that punt. It'd be interesting to see if Lou Holtz decides to go after this one. Fourth down again. Repunt situation. You know, Ryan Brewer would ordinarily be the punt returner, but he has just not been himself here the last couple weeks. Still recovering from an ankle surgery, and uh, they just want to try to give him a break. They feel like he's played too many plays. So Chavez Donnings is the deep man. He's moved up across the 20-yard line. Here is Kilgo. And will send it away. This one much higher and equally as deep. And Chavez Donnings fumbles it. The ball is loose. And Georgia has recovered. Seven turnovers last week in the loss to Virginia. Two of them were in the special teams. They fumbled two kickoff returns. This time, Chavez Donnings needs to field this ball, and then when it's on the ground, he's got to go get it. He also had a teammate that tried to pick up the ball. Instead of just falling on the ball, I think that's Dacus Terman, or no, that's Island, DeAndre Island, who tried to pick the ball up instead of just diving on the football. And Georgia, with a huge play in the special teams. Ryan Davis is the man who recovered it. Lou Holtz will increase the pace. They fumbled two kickoff returns yeah. last week. Well, he said if they put Ryan Brewer back there is because they wanted to make sure they caught it. If they put Donnings back there is because they wanted to try to get a return. And Georgia has to call timeout. 
Uh, JT Wall actually called the timeout. DJ Shockley, the new quarterback in the game, and his fullback bailed him out. Well, you see graphically why Lou Holtz is walking yeah. so rapidly. <laughs> Seven turnovers last week, one in the opener in New Mexico State. Now, D.J. Shockley, the redshirt freshman, is in at quarterback. This is Tyson Browning, a true freshman, who gets his first carry of the season. There is a fumble by the freshman, and South Carolina gets it back. A lot of the times when you play freshmen, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. They've got great skill and athleticism, but you don't know how they'll react in the game. And George Gauze gets a hand in there and knocks the ball loose from Tyson Browning. And what a huge play by the South Carolina defense. Mark Richt chooses to take Musa Smith out, put the youngster in. And that decision comes back and hurts him. Although he can't make the guy hold on to the football. That's up to Tyson Browning. First down and 10. Up the middle, Andrew Pinnock. So fumble, fumble. South Carolina, then Georgia. You know, last week against Virginia, four of the seven turnovers gave Virginia the ball on the 20-yard line or better. Tough to put your defense in those situations. There was another case. South Carolina had to come on defensively and defend the short field, and that time they turned it over. So uh, a great response by the Carolina defense. And a second down and eight at the 11-yard line. And this is where Corey Jenkins has to really be smart with the football. He'll keep it. Comes left. Out to the 17-yard line. Bruce Thornton, number seven makes the tackle it'll be third down for Olympus College football trivia and the latest top 25 updates go to the college football arena at cbssportsline.com or America online enter keyword CBS sports line yeah I kind of made the point I mean Corey Jenkins is not your everyday quarterback I mean he's 220 pounds he actually when he went to junior college he went to play linebacker and the quarterback there broke his collarbone so they asked him if he could play quarterback and he said sure I mean he he's a guy who's going to duck his head and run over people good defensive play flag is down so is Andrew Pinnock now we'll see against who boss Bailey and Thomas Davis with the tackle Andrew Pinnock is getting better as an open field runner as his career develops. But whenever he starts running sideways, you've kind of beat him. I mean, he wants to go north and south, that big guy. When you get him moving sideways, you neutralize him. On the offense, Bailey is declined. It'll be fourth down. So Boss Bailey and Thomas Davis collaborate for the tackle, fourth down. And here is Tyler Dean on the punt. Another dangerous return man. Gibson is the kickoff returner. Damian Gary, a very dangerous return guy for Georgia. And if things go well, a good field position awaits the Georgia Bulldogs. It'll be interesting to see if Rick goes back to Shockley on this possession, again with good field position anticipated. Great. Nice and high. What a beautiful kick. Taken by Gary at the 28. Downfield coverage, a flag is on the floor. A 56-yard wow. ball. What a kick. <laughs> you know, Lou told us yesterday when we asked him about Tyler Dean, he says he is a great one. You could not ask for a better kick right there. High, driving kick. Get yourself out of bad position, and now a penalty will knock him back even further. Steve Shaw. During the return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. It'll be first down. We had a 50-minute weather delay. Lightning strikes in the area. But back to play now, and D.J. Shockley is in a quarterback. Mark Rick said he was going to play him more by design this week. His intention in the opener was to play him one series in each half. He wanted to play him more in this ballgame. And again, you've got to be concerned with him when he leaves the pocket. 
Now, he can throw it. He's not just a runner, but he is dangerous when he tucks it under his arm. And here's a quarterback sweep. Comes right, reverses field. The flag is down. So is Shockley. Rod Wilson, sophomore, number 12. I don't know if Georgia had enough men on the line of scrimmage there before that ball was snapped. And an aggressive play by the Carolina defense. No, that's okay. Penalty obviously declined by South Carolina, so Shockley dumped a loss of six. Shockley will play more by design today, according to Mark Rick, but he didn't want to tell us how much more. I'm not sure he exactly knows. He just knows he wants him to play more because he can make plays and he wants him on the field. This is a much tougher situation than he's been in, though. Here's Smith coming right. Good open field tackle by Rashawn Faison. Well, Carolina, nice defensive job by Faison. Last SEC championship. Under Vince Dooley in 1982, Ray Goff, Jim Donnan, Mark Richt. It has been amazingly 20 years since they yeah. won an SEC title. Four head coaches, four school presidents, and more than 500 players. Now it's on the shoulders of Mark Richt, second year. Big situation right here for DJ Shockley. Third and long, on the road, deep in your own territory. I wouldn't be surprised if Mark Rick runs the football here. Musa Smith, he needed a ton. He got uh, three Almost quarters a of a ton. ton. Yeah. Yeah. Now the good thing there is he at least gets that ball out in decent situation for his punter, Jonathan Kilgo. I mean, now Kilgo doesn't have to kick from deep in his own territory. They can flip the field here with a good punt. This is not a surprise, but Ryan Brewer yeah. is back to return the punt. Translation, so, let's catch the football. Yeah, Chavez Donnings on to replace Brewer. Although Brewer was one of the guys who fumbled a kickoff return last week. That's when the Carolina coaches knew things were going to be a long night when he fumbled. Brewer has it. God mentioned he had ankle surgery and hasn't really recovered since then. I wonder if they have brain delays in Thailand as a survivor. Huh? First down, <laughs> 10. Here's the quick pitch, right side. Brewer. That wasn't an easy catch either. Ryan Brewer. Now, a little trickery, fake the running play, throw the quick screen, and then get a good block from your other wide receiver. Michael Ages, number seven, is going to get the great block. Fake it to Pinnock, throw it out to Brewer, and then watch number seven right there. Ages with the big block on Boss Bailey, and that enables Brewer to get the first down. With this offense and Corey Jenkins, you throw a lot of screens, a lot of underneath things, and then you throw it deep. Again, they don't do a lot of intermediate throwing. He has a very strong arm. They like to spread you out with formation, run the football, and then throw quick stuff. First down and 10. Might be the last play of the quarter. <laughs> Gain of uh, a couple to the 48-yard line. Robert Gethers makes the tackle. And that's the end of the first quarter with our score, 3-0 Georgia. We'll return to williams Price Stadium right after this message. And a word from your local station. Welcome back to williams Bryce Stadium, Columbia, South Carolina. Start at quarter number two after a 50-minute rain delay. Lightning strikes in the area. And on second down, here is Corey Jenkins with the reverse. Fake reverse. Brewer, the fake reverse. It is indeed. And the pass deep. Incomplete. Intended for Matthew Thomas. Great play by DeCorey Bryant because they had it. I mean, they, they executed it perfectly. Here's Matthew Thomas, their big play guy. They're going to try to get him the ball, fake the reverse to Brewer. It's well executed. It's well protected, man to man. And it's a good throw by Corey Jenkins. But to Corey Bryant, just able to get his right hand in on the football. 
Maybe he didn't. Maybe it was there enough to distract the play. And Matthew Thomas not able to make the catch. Now, with James Atkinson out of the game, he was their big play guy. Matthew Thomas is the guy as a receiver who has to make big plays for this offense. Empty backfield, quarterback draw, and Jenkins is down at the 46-yard line. Nice pressure by Georgia. David Pollock has been... Uh, so far in this early part of the season has played great from his defensive end position the buck position a sophomore out of Snellville He's a guy who kind of came in here as a fullback. He played defensive tackle last year They moved him to end this year and he's had an outstanding camp and he's really, uh, he's a high energy high motor guy who has played very well very deep and Tyler Dean on the punt for the second time. He had one of 56 yards just a moment ago, the third time in the ball game. Nice and high, and Gary will get out of the way. That one into the end zone touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, and the Georgia Bulldogs. 50-minute rain delay. Folks are coming out of their shoes. Back in a moment. Three nothing Georgia leads they have the ball and David Green is back in at quarterback having given way to DJ Shockley for a couple of series Green first down and 10 Bulldogs at the 20 and off Lisa Smith that's his ninth carry and he doesn't get much on that one Georgia Bulldogs leading it's three nothing and uh, Todd we talked a little bit at the beginning of the telecast about the situation you yeah, said they had at Georgia. Well, I'm not going to call it a controversy yet because it's not. I mean, the guys get along really well, Shockley and Green, and until that changes, it's still just a situation. I personally don't like it. I don't like a two-quarterback situation. I like one guy to be the starter, and I guess that's a, the quarterback coming out in me, but I don't think you can play without looking over your shoulder when there's two guys playing. Three-man front. Here's Green, comes to the left side and finds Terrence Edwards, but it is incomplete as he did not have control until he went out of I wish you could have seen the sense of relief it was palpable on Todd's face when you said you agreed with it <laughs> timeout has been called again <laughs> by Georgia they have used all three of their timeouts clock management time call Corey Jenkins has returned to quarterback. It's first and goal. C.J. Fry is the center. Yeah, and the most important thing with the rain starting again, secure the snap from center on this play. Pinnock directly behind Jenkins. Here's the inside give. Fumble, balls on the ground. Fumble again. Second turnover. And again inside the red zone. The ball is wet. It was a bad exchange, not between the center and the quarterback, but between the quarterback and Andrew Pinnock. And I don't think Pinnock even thought he was supposed to get the football. Take a look at this again. Corey Jenkins turns, and I don't know if Andrew Pinnock even knew he was supposed to get the football, but it was on his hip and not in his belly, and a huge turnover for South Carolina. Chris Clemens is the guy who's going to come up with the football for Georgia. But that was just a poor exchange with a wet football between the quarterback and running back. And David Green is the quarterback on first down now after the second fumble recovery by Georgia. And he is stuffed. Nice play in there. Musa Smith with the carry. And uh, Todd noted the rain has returned. This one not accompanied by the lightning strikes, which caused a 50-minute weather delay. From uh, 10 till 4 till 20 till 5. And this crowd of 84,000, because of the absence of lightning, has uh, remained in their seats, but hooting their disappointment now after the second fumble by South Carolina in the first half. Here's Green out of the end zone, goes deep left side, incomplete, a little too high for Terrence Edwards, number eight. South Carolina again showed cover two, a safety coming over the top and there was a hole in there between the corner and safety but David Green just not able to drive down on that ball. Big play right here because if South Carolina can get a big stop here punting in this weather you got a snap you got to field the snap you got to kick it they should be able to get the football back in real good situation if they can make a big stop here on third down. Well, David Green four of seven ninety two yards. 
already surpassing the total he had in the game two weeks ago against Clemson. Here's Smith, the deep man behind JT Wall in the end zone. And Green will throw. Puts it out deep, up in the air for grabs. Gibson. Got it. Yeah. Big play in the rainstorm. And he took a shot from DeAndre Island at the end of the play. And you can see Gibson shaken up a little bit from that hit, but he does a great job of going up and catching the ball at its highest point. He's working against Dante Robinson. He kind of pushes him out of the way, makes a catch. Now watch at the end, the hit from Island, and he holds on to the football. That's great concentration by Fred Gibson, knowing he's going to get hit. Fred Gibson already over 100 yards in this game. Here's Green in the storm going deep. Got a man open, and it's incomplete. You know, you might be thinking, why, you know, why is Georgia Mark Rick calling passing plays in this kind of weather? But as long as they can keep the football relatively dry, a passing team has an advantage over the defense because the defensive guys are backpedaling. They're backing up on a wet field. Your receivers are running straight ahead. They came real close to connecting on another deep pass right there. Reggie Brown, the intended receiver. And it's going to be second down and 10. A fumble recovery inside the five on the 11th play of a sustained drive, during which time South Carolina was trying to take the lead in this ballgame. 3-0 Georgia. Smith. Out near the 40-yard line, the tackle made by Langston Moore. And Jill Arrington has wisely made her way underneath the stadium. Let's check in with Jill now. I've checked this radar room. You can see it. The storm is here, but good news. There is no lightning strike, so we will keep playing. They're keeping a close eye on it, but we see no lightning in the area, so we're going to play through this one. All right, Jill, thank you. Uh, Jill Arrington, who is used to weather updates, having worked mm -hmm. at the U.S. Open for a couple of weeks. Tennis tournament, of course. Third down and six. Green out of the gun. South Carolina brings five. Here's Gibson right Fumble. side. Fumble. South Carolina got it. Fred Gibson held on to the football the first time that DeAndre Island hit him. But this time, Island gets the best of him. It's going to be DeAndre Island again who's going to make the hit on Gibson after the screen pass. And the junior out of Tupelo, Mississippi, knocks it loose. Take a look here. Quick screen. Try to set up the blockers, and DeAndre Island, number 28 in there, as well as Jonathan Martin, and they knock the football loose. And now, South Carolina needs to take advantage of this turnover. David Green, hard to hold on to a wet football, man. That thing is slippery down there. DeAndre Island was benched as a yeah. starter last week because of his ineffectiveness in the first game against New Mexico State, but coming off the bench, played very well and regained his starting spot. One of the thinking was with DeAndre Island that he was so concerned about the new corners and covering up for the corners that he didn't take care of his own business and didn't play his own position. And uh, they put Faison at free safety to kind of get his attention, and I think it worked. And Dondrell Pinkins back in the football game for South Carolina. And here is Pinkins. Looks deep left side. He's got double coverage down there. The ball up for grabs and tipped incomplete. And a flag is down. Sean Jones was defending with the Corey Bryant. You know, if this goes against Georgia, this is really unfortunate because South Carolina tried to catch Georgia sleeping there. They tried to fake the quick screen and then throw deep, and Georgia was not fooled at all. And it's really a throw Pinkins probably shouldn't have made. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards. You know, you call this play with the idea that they're going to bite on the quick screen. I don't know. It looks like DeCorey Bryant got a push in there, number 22, as they're going for the football. There's a push in the back on Michael Ages. And so throwing in the double coverage worked out for Dondrell Pinkins that time because he gets the penalty call. After the 15-yard penalty, first down and 10, South Carolina inside the 24. Why is Pinkins in the game as Brian Van Gorder, the new defensive coordinator, has to adjust a little bit is because Corey Jenkins, another turnover. And I think Lou Holtz is saying, hey, we cannot have that kind of ball insecurity from the quarterback position. And he's going with Pinkins for a while. The quarterback draw to Pinkins inside the 20 to the 19. Well, Corey Jenkins in the start at Virginia last week 
three fumbles lost and through an interception those were uh, four of the seven turnovers and I think you're right I mean your suspicion that Andrew Pinnock did not expect that handoff it, uh, it was not a clean exchange it, it didn't look right and uh, you know Corey Jenkins the first fumble last week was not his fault he just the guy put a helmet on the football but the other two fumbles I mean he he just was careless with the ball and the interception was a careless throw second down three nothing game and there's Pinnock and Pinkins hitting each other behind the line. That's where most of the contact came from. And uh, it'll be third down inside the 20 yard line at the 19. Well, time now for the Aflac trivia question answer. Who's the last Bulldog to lead the team in tackles for three straight seasons? All the way back to the mid 70s. Ben Zambezi, 75, 76, and 77. <laughs> Miss that, the duck. That, I do too. We got to get him back. There's Ben. Oh my goodness, that is a mid 70s look, isn't it? Neck roll, a hair over the neck roll. Played in the Canadian Football League after his graduation from Georgia. On third down, Pinkins right side over the head of Ryan Brewer. It'll be fourth down. Sloppy execution right now, and, and again, the weather's a factor, but. Uh, you know, the play before this, there was a collision between the quarterback and Andrew Pinnock. This time, uh, a ball thrown well over the head of Ryan Brewer, and, and they've got to settle for the uh, the field goal attempt. Now Daniel Weaver will be kicking into the wind, although it could be a gusting wind because of the shield provided by the end zone stands. 37 yards for the top. Key guy here is Eric Kimry, the holder fielding the snap of the wet football. Nice hold, but the kick is pulled to the left side. No good. Gimry got it down, but Weaver hooked it. And so the miss is from 37 yards away. Well, South Carolina's defense gets the turnover. They give him a situation. Looks like a pretty good hold. And as you called it, just a, a hook left. And Daniel Weaver missing for the first time this year. He's now two of three for two and a half games. And uh, he had an odometer on this guy's ankle. I wonder how many miles he's walked in 30 years of coaching. Well, the, the turnovers just have to be driving him crazy because if you'd ever say what's one of the marks of a Lou Holtz team, they don't beat themselves with turnovers. This team this year has. DJ Shockley back in at quarterback, and the handoff goes to Musa Smith. Remember, Georgia has no timeouts. Two minutes and 22 seconds left in the first half. They've had to burn all three of their timeouts. So any plans that Mark Rick had for trying to score here before the half on this drive will have to do it without any timeouts. Now, Musa Smith and DJ Shockley in again at quarterback. One of the bright lights in the win over Clemson 31-28 two weeks ago. There's the stunts defensively. Shockley will scamper and is knocked down at the 33-yard line. Lance Lowry, number 48. And 10. Lucia Smith again, left side. He had 23 carries, Todd, in the, in the win over Clemson, but he has been, because of injuries, he's not been a man that has carried the ball yeah. a lot of times. Well, and during the summer, they started out by, you know, giving him some contact, and then they really backed off towards the end of training camp because they didn't, you know, they didn't want to push him too hard. And when he got into the game, they weren't happy with the way he was finishing runs. He looks like he's running a lot tougher tonight. 15, this is his 16th carry now for over 60 yards. So he's doing a much better job of lowering his pads and finishing the runs. And that was the thing they really stressed with him during the off week. Well, because of this uh, multitude of injuries he's suffered, he's only carried more than 20 times, five times in his career. He seems certain to make that yeah. six times tonight. And I really think that he is the key for the Georgia offense this season. They've got to have balance. They've got good receivers. They've got two young, good quarterbacks. But they've got to be able to run the football. And uh, they'll only go as far as Musa Smith goes running. It. Shockley play fake. Deep right side. Double coverage again. That one tipped away beautifully by Dante Robinson. Uh, perfect play. Perfect timing by Robinson. A special game for him. This is a kid who's from Athens, Georgia. Played at Clark Central High School. Played against David Green a couple times in high school, even though Shockley's in the game now. But 
A nice play by Robinson. He sees it the whole way and times the jump and gets his left hand on the football. Island there to help also, but Robinson had that one all the way. Yes, he did. A high school teammate of Damian Gary, who is uh, one of the outstanding receivers for Georgia. Second down and 10 with less than a minute to go. 37 seconds. Everybody went except the center. Ian Knight didn't snap the football. Ten guys went, and Ian Knight just stayed there. Oh, illegal snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Three nothing. Excuse me. One of the things that Ian Knight is concerned with is Langston Moore, the guy that's lined up right about three inches from his nose. And last year they had a trouble blocking Langston Moore, and uh, he called the center, Kurt McGill, and, and asked him, you know, some pointers about blocking Moore. And he wasn't very encouraged by the reports. There's second down and 15. Shockley will reverse field, gets a good block from Stinchcomb, and uh, then is hit as he reaches the 49-yard line. A Lance Lowry tackle. That was a lot of running for a modest game. And a flag is down. A late, late flag, and it was involving Jonathan Martin and Damian Gary at the end of the play. Whoever this goes on, it's going to be a, a big mental mistake. Well, it appears it's going to go against Georgia and Damian Gary. Dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty. It will be third down. Here's Damian Gary away from the play. The play's over. DeAndre Island hits him. And as the old adage, it's always the second guy. That was the second hit, and that's the one that drew the flag. Yeah, he did get hit illegally, but it's always, well, I shouldn't say always, 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. It's the second hit that gets the flag. Island pops him. Gary tried to retaliate, and it's going to be third and 22 with uh, 10 seconds to go. And they're going to take a knee, as they say, and head to the locker room, leading by three. Well, the opening play of the game was a foul. Well, South Carolina Stop. tried to call a timeout. They, they tried to get a timeout, but I don't think the refs are going to give it to them. They wanted to, to try to block a punt. Not going to work. Opening play of this ball game was a 52-yard pass to Fred Gibson for Georgia. That set up a field goal. We then had a 50-minute lightning delay in the ball game, and we have reached halftime with no further scores. Georgia, ninth rank, trying to end a two-game losing streak to South Carolina. They lost in Athens last year. They lost here in Columbia two years ago. And let's check in with Jill Arrington, who's with Coach Mark Rick. Well, Coach Rick, your team didn't look like they were able to get in any kind of rhythm in the first half. How much did that rain delay affect your team? I don't know if it did or not. I know we, we came out with a lot of uh, enthusiasm uh, in pregame. We warmed up. Well, I know when we came back after the break, we didn't throw and catch very good in the warm-ups. And uh, we might have lost a little something, but we got, that's why we got 20 minutes here to straighten that out. We've seen both quarterbacks in this half. Who will we see most in the next half? We'll keep our rotation going. Great, Coach. Thanks a lot. All right, Jill, thank you. We have reached halftime in Columbia, South Carolina. 3-0 Georgia here. Let's go back to New York and Tim Brando. All right, Vern, coming up with the Gateway Halftime Report, Spencer and I will have all of today's scores and highlights. Is three a charm for the Irish? We'll find out after this word from your CBS station. Okay. Halftime concluded. Georgia leads at 3 nothing as we get set for the start of the second half after this. 50-minute lightning delay. The stoppage of play occurred midway through the first quarter, and uh, Georgia had scored 3-0 at that point. Carolina will receive the ball to open this second half. Jared Farabee, number 89, is the middleman of three who are back. There's Ryan Brewer, who was also among those back deep awaiting the kickoff. They had a little problem in the Virginia game with some pooch kickoffs to the corners, and so they've countered that with the three-man deep. Here's Brewer backing up, gathering it in at the one-yard line. Comes right, looks for blocking help, and heads back to the left. There's a near block in the back. There is no flag. Now, now there's a flag, <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, Brewer is out of bounds at the 22, but that's going to go inside the 20 yard line after the flag is walked off. Ryan Brewer out of Troy, Ohio, hobbled by a bad ankle, but uh, for the most part, sure handed. He did have that fumble last week in the loss at Virginia. And just a moment ago, Jill Arrington had a chance to talk with South Carolina head coach Lou Holtz. Coach Holtz, you told us yesterday that your team needed to eliminate the bad plays. Seven turnovers last week, already two today. What did you tell them at the half? Well, you know, we drop a touchdown pass. We miss a field goal. We fumbled deep, twice deep in their territory. That's a good football team, but we just can't make those mistakes and self-destruct. That's proud of the way we played in the kicking game. That's proud of the way we played offense and defense, but not the errors. Corey Jenkins, who... Uh, had a bad exchange on a first and goal at the two is back in at quarterback. One of those who uh, was tagged with an error. Jenkins the leading ground gainer for Carolina in the first half. And he'll operate from the gun on first down. Here is the quarterback pass or run. He uh, will keep it on the ground and is knocked down as he gets out to the 15 yard line. Corey Jenkins the 26 year old senior who uh, the leader of the South Carolina team is trying to come from behind in the second half. And they've got to get some big plays. I mean, they only average four yards per play. No big pass plays, no big, real big-time running plays, and they turned the ball over twice, you know, and that was the thing that killed them last week. They turned it in, turned it over going in to score one time and turned it over deep in their own territories. They've got to protect the football. They've got to find a way to create some big plays offensively. 13 combined possessions. We've had six punts, four lost fumbles, two by either team. And again, Jenkins comes to the right side, cut down out at the 17-yard line. Now let's take you back and look at the first half highlights in this game. The opening play of the ball game, a 52-yard pass to Fred Gibson from David Green. That set up this field goal from Billy Bennett, the only score we've had. Then lightning came. We will suspend play at the... 50-minute delay, then the fumble started. That was Donnings. Here's a freshman running back for Georgia inside the 10. And uh, there was a big one for South Carolina as Corey Jenkins and Andrew Pinnock couldn't get together on a first and goal play from the two. Jenkins again stumbles out near the 19-yard line. Let's break it down statistically at the end of the first half of play. Nothing real flashy for either team. Fairly even in numbers. You see Carolina only 48 yards throwing the football. But the two turnovers for both teams. South Carolina actually fumbled a third time but recovered their own fumble. We're going to have a measurement now on that third down play. And Tony Gilbert made a nice play flying in at Corey Jenkins on that one and uh, tripped him up. Well, this field has held up well. You know, we had some pretty hard rain. We had hard rain this morning here in Columbia, too, and this field and the drainage system is, uh, has been pretty good. You don't see guys slipping around. There's Tony Gilbert, 42, getting a, a grip on the ankle, and that trips up Corey Jenkins, but Jenkins point. able to fall forward enough for the first down. Now, Dondrell Pinkins has come in at quarterback on first down and 10 after Jenkins got the first down play. Pinkins, a sophomore from Camilla, Georgia. Pinnock. And Thez Robinson are the running backs. Pinnock this time. The short man. Here's Pinkins back. Flushed out to the left. And he will run. Out to the 21. He picked up two. All right. Thank you, Tim. It's a good okay. football team in Columbus. A good, great defense. Got some good young backs. And Craig Grenzel playing smart football at quarterback. Draw play. Robinson gets the handoff deep from Pinkins. Weaves over left tackle out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Robinson in the game song. Another third down play. Pinkins wants to throw, fires it off his back foot. He has a sliding Ryan Brewer. First down at the 43 yard line. The reason you love Ryan Brewer is you know he's going to make plays. I mean, he's going to give you everything he's got and he's going to make plays. Good patience by Pinkins, stretching this out until he sees Brewer clear behind the linebacker, Boss Bailey. That is good poise by the young quarterback in Ryan Brewer. I mean, he just makes plays. He's not always flashy. He's not always uh, exciting looking, but he makes positive plays for this offense. Saw the numbers for the day. Three catches now, 43 yards for Brewer, and a first down. 
after an 18 yard game. Matthew Thomas is still the guy who has to make some big plays. There's Robinson stuffed behind the line by Jonathan Sullivan, who many ben think Robinson, might become Walker. the best defensive lineman of this bunch. Yeah, he's a great young player out of Griffin, Georgia. There he is, 57. Working on Cedric Williams, it just blows right by him. Interestingly enough, both teams with a number 57 playing in there at the defensive tackle position. Both of them are the anchors of their respective defense. Second down, 14. Three men split wide left. One wide right. Pinkins caught and dropped. Clemens got there. Well, that Pinkins. was a blitz, and they tried to run an option right into the blitz, and that didn't work. Two plays in a row now, South Carolina has gone backwards. The blitz comes right here, Clemens right into the quarterback, and there's nowhere for Pinkins to go, and that's probably a play if he sees that, he's got to go the other way or do something different. Brian Van Gorda, the defensive coordinator, second season under Mark Richt, was the fourth coordinator in five years and the first to serve out two years at Georgia. Loss of eight, it's third and 22, and Jenkins is back in. That quarterback, prevent defenses. Georgia will bring only three, drop eight. Jenkins, a lot of time, but that umbrella is down there. Here's a sidearm throw incomplete. Boy, that was a could have had. Yeah, that, that's a should have had. I mean, that's a catch that Matthew Thomas has Matthew to make complete. because Corey Jenkins it did his part. He wanted to go Four deep down the field. It wasn't there. He bought a little time by scrambling, and he makes a nice throw. And Matthew Thomas has to step up and make this play. He had both Tyler hands Dean. on the football. Formation for yeah, you just can't have that. I mean, they, they need him to step up. Again, James Maybe Atkinson Gary was their go-to receiver. He hurt his knee last week against Virginia, and they're counting on Matthew Thomas to be the new big play receiver. Tyler Dean is back to punt again. Damian Gary runs up to his right, gathers it at the 30-yard line. That's a block, and there is no flag. The crowd wanted one, and Gary struggles out to the 40-yard line. Time called after the 39-yard punt. Ken on the return. Three zip, Georgia. DTV, high definition television. First and ten, Green out of the shotgun. I think Mark Rick needs to stay with David Green for a while and get the football to Fred Gibson and Musa Smith. Comes the four-man rush. Here's Green underneath to Damian Gary. Jonathan Martin <laughs> up on top with the tackle. The shot facing down below. Four. Three nothing. The only score came on the opening drive of this ball game. Field goal from Billy Bennett. Here's Green out of the flat. Musa Smith. Dropsy. Musa has pretty soft hands. He was the leading receiver in the Clemson game, had four catches. That time just lost his concentration because this is a good throw by David Green. When you throw into a running back, you don't want him to have to reach up or reach behind. You want him to be able to catch that easily and keep his focus on running the football. Third and four. Georgia two of seven. So South Carolina doing a much better job in this ball game, playing on third down. Another big one right here. Double tight end set. Smith is the deep back. Play fake. Green, good fake, but good coverage down the right side. And Green yes, yes. stopped. Again, South Carolina showing more too deep than they've ever shown. Two deep safeties are split in the field. So he's looking to throw it in here. It's not open, and David Green has to run with the football. This is not a big cover two team, but they, in essence, double cover his intended receiver. He has to run with the football, and that's a good change-up coverage-wise by Charlie Strong. This has been primarily a three-deep or a man-free defensive football team, showing a lot more two-deep safeties in this one. Ryan Brewer, the deep man, Jonathan Kilgo will punt for Georgia. Big defensive play at cornerback by Dante Robinson on that last one. This is nice, high, and deep. And Brewer will let it go, and it will go into the end zone. A flag is down. Flag dropped inside the 30-yard line on the near side. Lou Holtz. I think afraid this is going to yeah. go against his club. 
and the kick, holding on the receiving team. That will be penalized half the distance from the pro scrimmage kick spot. It'll be first and 10 on the 10. Uh, he's in a little bit of pain right now. He's been in pain also because of surgery on his right elbow. Had a bursa sac uh, operated on three weeks ago. He had the 22 stitches taken out three days ago. He told us his doctor, Dr. Painless, <laughs> took out the stitches with a fork. And he's not wearing the little patch on his right elbow that uh, was so prominent yesterday. 65-year-old Lou Holtz, his team trails by three. Carolina trailing by three. They start uh, well within their own 20. They start at the 10 yard line. Corey Jenkins is in at quarterback. A little quick hitch out to the left side. He was down. Yep, it sure was. And they go backwards again. And, uh, you know, this is tough in this part of the field. Seven offensive possessions for South Carolina. This is the third time they've started inside the 10 yard line. They try to throw just a little quick screen, something fast to get. A few yards, and Matthew Thomas lets the knee touch the ground on the throw. Well, not a memorable day thus far for Matthew Thomas. And Kenny Irons, number 22, a true freshman, now makes his first appearance of the season. He is the tailback behind Andrew Pinnock. Kenny Irons, number 22. Just like we saw with the young freshman for Georgia, he better make sure he protects the football if indeed they give it to him. Second down and 12. There's the toss, and he uh, kept in possession. Out to the 20, takes a pretty good pop up around the shoulders. Kenny Irons, first carry in college football. I'm assuming they actually scored an offensive touchdown today, too. <laughs> That's right. Here's the toss to Irons, spin out to the five-yard line. David Pollock, number five. A little burst right now by Kenny Irons. I mean, this is an offense that's just been kind of plodding along with no excitement. And here comes the freshman. One of 18 South Carolina players from the state of Georgia. So you know this is a big game for him and does a nice job of hanging on to the football as they try to strip it out. Second down and five after the first down play. Jenkins will go with three receivers to the left side. Pinnock is the only setback. Here's the quarterback draw. Design, Corey Jenkins. Stiff arm still running. Another stiff arm. Why this offense is somewhat unique is it's single wing football. When he takes the snap, he's no longer a quarterback, he's a running back. Watch the lead block by Andrew Pinnock. Right there on the linebacker, C.J. Fry, the center with a big block on the other linebacker, and then you see how he can run in the open field. Corey Jennings, he has a strong arm, but he is an outstanding runner from the quarterback position. That's a lead draw from the quarterback position with Andrew Pinnock being the lead blocker. Sold soft drinks in this stadium for four years while he was in junior high and high school. Grew up dreaming of playing here, took a circuitous route to this spot. Flag down, a little rough exchange with Pinnock again, and we'll see there are two flags that are on the, uh, on the ground. That was a 42-yard run for Corey Jenkins, and uh, leading the players into the stadium. Here's his mom, Rachel. Sister Kelly, he's uh, the sixth in a family of 12 children. Played minor league baseball for four years, went all the way from Fort Myers to Battle Creek to Sarasota to Trenton to Birmingham. Six men on the line, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. He was the number one draft choice of the Boston no, Red Sox and then was traded to the White Sox. He got demoted from Birmingham to Burlington, Iowa. He says, you know, football looks pretty good. <laughs> And uh, he was actually recruited by Skip Holtz when the Holtz family was at Notre Dame. He always wanted to go to South Carolina, but that's when he met Skip Holtz as a high school senior at Dreher High School here in Columbia. There's Jenkins. Got a man. It's Pinnock. And Pinnock is down at the 23-yard line. Well, we are seeing a little bit of spark now from this Gamecock team. Well, and that's a nice play by Pinnock because Georgia read the screen pretty well. But what you see is how powerful the legs of Andrew Pinnock are. Because this screen play is kind of given away by Jenkins, and George is there to defend him. But watch the tacklers bounce off of the legs of Andrew Pinnock. He's just a hard guy to bring down if you just collide with him. 
He's built low to the ground. He's got big legs. And guys bounce off of him if you don't wrap him up. And again, running north and south. That's an all-day job tackling him. Second down and one. This drive began back at the 10-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Jenkins dropped. David Pollock, number 47, the left defensive end, made the tackle. Timely call by Brian Van Gorder that time. Went with the blitz. Good call at the right time. And Jenkins uh, stopped short on that one. There's Brian. Both of these teams concerned about giving up yards after the catch, and both teams so far doing a nice job of tackling the receivers in the open field. Now Jenkins looking over at Skip Holtz, wanting clarification of the play. They may have to burn a timeout. They do. Play clock was all the way down to four. Loss of three on the previous play brings up a third and five. South Carolina trailing by three. 4.07 to go third quarter. And a key third down play coming up now for South Carolina, trailing by three. They've got a third and five. And uh, 90 yards in this half, seven for Georgia. This is a good drive that Corey Jenkins has put together. Offensive line doing a nice job up there, but a key play right here, third down, because this is a long field goal try right here if they don't convert. Kenny Irons was on the field and what was not supposed to be. Boy, how do you do that out of a timeout? Out of a timeout, and Ryan Brewer finally realized that they had 12 men on the field. And Irons hurried over to the sidelines, but too late. My, oh my. Yeah, that, that just shouldn't happen out of a timeout. Kenny Irons is the true freshman, but you can't just blame him. I mean, take a look. Now, there's 12 guys on, and here's Ryan Brewer telling Irons, wait a minute, you're out of the game. And that's uh, an illegal substitution. You can't break the huddle with 12 guys. I've never seen a formation featuring six wide now. <laughs> Be tough to defend. Third and ten now. Much different. I mean, third and five to third and ten is a huge difference. And it affects the field goal possibilities if this play is not successful. Over the middle, deep, incomplete. Matthew Thomas. Well, this drive highlighted by the 42-yard run of Corey Jenkins. He is a running quarterback, Todd. Yeah, he's 5 of 10 throwing it, but this is what he does best, is run the football. He's powerful. He's elusive. He loves to run the football. And uh, 12 carries for 79 yards. Now, he's averaged over 100 yards in both of the first two ball games. And they're going to go for it now on fourth down. Because what would have been a 45-yard field goal attempt for Bennett, or rather for uh, Weaver, now would be a 52-yarder. Here comes the blitz. There's Ages. And Ages is free. But I don't know if he got enough for the first down. I think Michael Ages tried to stretch this for a little bit more yardage, and instead of just slipping forward, he tried to get sideways a little bit more. I think he would have had the first down if he would have just dove and go forward at the catch. This is well executed. Now watch right here. If he dives forward, he gets the first down. Instead, he tries to outrun one more defender and may have lost it. He did lose it. It was a good call. It was well executed, but at the very end, Michael Ages tried to elude one more defender, and he lost the first down. Take a look. If he slips right in between those two guys and goes forward, he makes the first down. DeCorey Bryant comes up with the big tackle. There he is. See, he's saying straight ahead. You got to just go straight ahead. Don't try to run by somebody. Needed 10, got nine. Ball goes over on downs, and David Green is still at quarterback. He'll throw. He comes left side, Gibson, and Gibson is hit twice and is knocked down by Jonathan Martin. 3.42 to go third quarter, a game that's running uh, later than expected because we had lightning strikes in the area midway through the first quarter. That resulted in a 50-minute delay because of weather. Play resumed. 3-0 is the score. It has been that way since the opening drive of the ballgame. I made the point that I think Mark Rick needs to stay with David Green now. The reason is because his poise. That's what he needs right now is his poise. Musa Smith 
Jermaine Lemon is the man who made that tackle. And it's going to be third down. David Green is not having a huge night numbers wise, but the thing that he did all last year that was most impressive as a freshman was he was so calm and so poised. I remember how he played in that Tennessee game. Outstanding poise, and that's what Mark Rick needs from him right now. He needs to run this offense. It's a tight slugfest game. He's got to be poised. Third and six, Green has time and delivers, and it's caught for a first down by Reggie Brown. Now this is an interesting play because it looked like the Carolina defenders were focused so much on Fred Gibson. They were thinking the ball was going to Gibson and they lost sight of Reggie Brown. And right in between three defenders, he jumps up and catches the football. Reggie Brown is coming off ACL surgery that cost him all of last year. And that's a 20-yard gain and a first down at the 48-yard line. Play fake. Green flushed. Throws it off balance and throws it away well outside the tackle box. So it's an incomplete pass. Yeah, Lou wants a penalty, but as long as he's outside the tackle box and the ball crosses the line of scrimmage, you can throw it away. Let's take a look now. The tackle box right here. Does David Green get beyond that line? Of course, I just erased it. Does he get beyond that when he throws it? I think he does. That line was moving as the as our shot was moving, but I do think he cleared the tackle box and threw it beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a great example of his streets for Coach Holtz. <laughs> Second down and ten. Contact. Snap, snap count. Again, poise of David Green. They got a free gift of five yards there. Langston Moore reacting to the voice of the quarterback instead of watching the football. Well, David Green, here comes the uh, call from Steve Shaw. All sides on the defense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Do you use that hard count a lot? As much as I could, you know. I mean, and, and it's one of those things where you've got to kind of see how much the ref will allow you to do. John Elway was one of the best, and he would move his head and his shoulders. You're really not supposed to be able to do that, but as long as the referee allows you to do that, I mean, you, if you can get free gifts of five yards, you should do it as many times as you can. Second and five after the gift. Green backs off and changes the play. A lot of cushion for Fred Gibson down at the bottom. There's a handoff to Musa Smith. Tackle. Musa Smith. At the 44 yard line. All right, Tim, thank you. Can anybody say Archie Griffin? Mm. How about the start for the freshman at Ohio State? Here's Musa Smith. And he's picked up another Georgia first down. And how about this drive for David Green and the Georgia offense? This veteran offensive line, they've got five seniors up there in Stinchcomb, Alex Jackson, Ian Knight, Kevin Breedlove, and Kareem Marshall taking control. They hadn't gained anything in the second half until this drive. Next carry of the night will be Musa Smith's 20th for the second time in this season. He had 23 for 105 in the opener two weeks ago against Clemson. And his health, a vital issue for this Georgia football team. First and 10. Musa Smith knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Langston Moore, number 15. Don Girl Pinkins had gone to the sidelines to have his ankle re-x-rayed. He had ankle surgery just three weeks ago. Bone chips taken out. Joe Arrington reporting that. Here's uh, Green throwing off balance, and it is caught by Gibson at the 36-yard line. Nice job by David Green just finding an outlet because at the last minute, South Carolina jumped out of their defense and dropped eight into coverage. They only rushed three, and David Green really didn't have anywhere to go with the football and had to dunk it off. That's going to bring up another third down. This one's third and eight. But it'll go in the opposite direction. We've reached the end of the third quarter with our score still 3-0 Georgia. We'll return to williams Price Stadium right after this message and this word from your local station. Back to the start of quarter number four. Georgia up 3-0. And in the midst of a sustained drive now, they're looking at a third and eight at the 36-yard line. 
They're two for two on third down conversions in this current drive. Four for ten for the ball game. This drive began after South Carolina turned it over on downs. That one's knocked down. And a flag is down as well at the line of scrimmage just in front of the Georgia bench. It was George Gauze who tipped it. And we'll see where the infraction is. That will be declined, I'm sure. Illegal formation, six men on the line. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, Mark Rick may go for it here. I mean, he's got a decision to make. Fourth down. Now it looks like he's going to punt the football. Try to pin South Carolina back. They've started with poor field position quite a bit in the game and haven't really been able to move or sustain drives against Georgia. Oh, that stiff wind that brought the uh, rain showers and the lightning storms from the south has subsided now, so Kilgo will punt it high. And what a beautiful punt, pooch kick that is. What a terrific punt by Jonathan Kilgo. Terrific punt and great awareness by the coverage guys going down there knowing where the end zone was Knowing where the ball was and That's Brian Jordan who was the actual deep snapper who got down there and down that football Carolina's got it 96 yards away A 14 44 remaining in this one and from 96 yards away from the uh, goal line South Carolina Corey Jenkins We'll take a direct snap, flips it out right side. Brewer cuts inside, picks up two to the six. And David Pollock, number 47, is there to make the tackle as we get uh, underway with the fourth quarter. I know you really like the idea of Mark Rick keeping David Green in. Well, I think David Green has kind of settled into it. He didn't get the conversion on that third down, but he's kind of taking control of the game. He's getting the ball to Fred Gibson. For South Carolina, they've had eight possessions in the game. Four of them have started inside their 10-yard line. That's tough duty. I mean, against a good defense, and Georgia's a good athletic defense, tough to move the ball 90 yards plus. Looking at second down and eight right now from the six-yard line. Here's the sprint right. Jenkins pulls up. He's in trouble. That and ball. it's intercepted. My goodness. David Pollock it was stole the ball. Yes, it was picked off. It wasn't even thrown. Pollock. Corey Jenkins looked around because he had no idea where the football went. I think David Pollock just grabbed the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Amazing. David Pollock is the buck end. Here he is right here. Watch him rush the quarterback. It's a little sprint to his side. Corey Jenkins is going to start the throw, and Pollock hits it with one hand and catches it on the way down. What an athletic play by David Pollock. Extra point from Bennett is up and good. My, oh my. The amazing thing is that he beat two blockers, Watt Sanderson and Dacus Terman, both there, as David Pollock wins the battle. Here is David Pollock. Extraordinary play in the end zone. Really, really was. Really. And it will go as an interception, not a fumble. It was ruled that the ball was actually going forward. And uh, what an athletic play. Yeah, and he is an athletic guy. Remember, he was recruited here as a fullback. He was a highly touted fullback out of high school, Shiloh High School in Snellville. Moved to the defensive line, played inside last year, moved to end this year. And Brian Van Gorder told us his skill level has dramatically improved. Here's Farabee backing up. And it's Matthew Thomas who grabs it instead, and he is uh, down at the 34-yard line. Well, well worth another look. Yeah. Well, first of all, he whips the block of Watt Sanderson. Now, at this point, he's only thinking deflection, just trying to knock the pass down. But on the way down, he says, wait a minute. I can catch this ball. He catches it with the same left hand. And as you said, Vern, just a tremendously athletic play by David Pollock. Knocks it down, keeps it alive, and catches it before it hits the ground, all with one hand. Wow. And that first replay erased any question as to whether or not he had possession when he went down. Here's Kenny Irons, who takes the pitch from Corey Jenkins. 
Irons six yards. This young man is off to a great start. Had eight tackles, a sack, a couple pressures in the win over Clemson. And to this point has made the biggest play of this football game today in South Carolina. And remember the big fourth down call that Mark Rick uh, sent in in the win over Clemson. That one hits. No, that's, incomplete. that's an incomplete pass. It hit Watt Sanderson in the back. It was David Pollock who was lined up at fullback for Musa Smith on that conversion two weeks ago. And this is David Pollock again driving Watt Sanderson back off the ball right into the throwing lane. I mean, Pollock is 260, Sanderson 300, but leverage, he got under him and drove him back. And you can't emphasize enough, too, the field position where that interception occurred. Again, starting on the inside the five-yard line, now at least South Carolina on this possession, decent field position for this third down play. Andre Gauz has come in as the wide receiver on third and four. Out to Brewer. Brewer gets a block from Thomas, and he's got enough for the first down at the 49-yard line. I think they got to get the ball to Ryan Brewer a little bit. I mean, even though he's a little gimpy, even though he's not as quick as he has been, he still is a guy you can count on. You mentioned Matthew Thomas. He does a great job here. He knocks two guys off the play, actually blocks two Georgia defenders, and Brewer finds the first down. Ryan Brewer with five catches, 53 yards in the ball game. A first down with under 13 to go. They still haven't had any play that eats up a big chunk of yardage. Nothing big. Here's Jenkins going deep for Thomas. And there's, Got it. There's one. And that's the guy that they needed to do it. Matthew Thomas is their big play guy. It's a two deep zone. And there's a soft spot right between the corner and the safety. Greg Blue is the safety who's going to come over the top, but not before Jenkins is able to stick that football in. That is an excellent throw by Corey Jenkins, sticking it in between the two defenders. 25-yard gain and a first down just inside the 25. There's Jenkins pumping once, going deep. Into the corner, battle for it up in the air, and it's caught! Ryan Brewer, touchdown! He beat Bruce Thornton, the corner who has kind of had a history of being in the right place, but not having the ability to make the play. And that was the case there. He was in position, Ryan Brewer was in position, Brewer made the play and Thornton didn't. Ryan Brewer just wanted this ball more than Bruce Thornton. Thornton in good position, Brewer just outfought him for the football. Daniel Weaver for the extra point. How about the two throws in a row by Corey Jenkins? The first one to Matthew Thomas, that one off his back foot to Ryan Brewer. You can't do it any better. And Carolina right back in it. That was a pretty fine catch as well. Time called. Third largest crowd in the history of williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, energized by that quick strike. 65-yard drive, two of the plays, 25 yards apiece. They can't afford a letdown here because Fred Gibson, a dangerous kickoff returner. They've got to be solid on their coverage here. Terrence Edwards is back as well, and this will be Gibson at the goal line. Stumbles a bit, regains his balance, and cuts left. Now right, now left again, and he did get it all the way to the 37-yard line. Take a look at the touchdown again. They're going to cross the receivers, and you hope against man-to-man -man that one of those defenders will get picked off. But Bruce Thornton does a great job. He bubbles behind his own man. He's in position. But Ryan Brewer is just such an instinctive football player, and that's the way to describe him. He is a football player. And Corey Jenkins, two huge throws in a row to draw within three. And D.J. Shockley has come on now for Georgia. Red shirt freshman. I don't agree with this. I really don't. Fake toss. Shockley pulls out to his left. And there is Rashad Faison who knocks him out of bounds at the 46. I mean, this may be, you know, this may work out for Mark Rick. And he's been coaching a long time and, uh, you know, had, had something like this before. But I don't agree with it. All right, Tim, thank you. Ours is a 50-minute delay here. This time we've had a delay in a game in South Carolina in 30 years, 1972.
That was Mark Rick talking with D.J. Shockley. Well, he's done this once before. Yeah. He did it when he was the offensive coordinator at Florida State. In that case, Casey Weldon and Brad Johnson. Yeah, 1990. He started off with uh, Brad Johnson, and then he started rotating Casey Weldon in, and Weldon ended up starting the last seven games of that year, and then 12 of the, the 13 games the next year. And the mistake he felt he made was he didn't play Brad Johnson enough after Weldon became the starter. As a postscript, Johnson didn't seem to mind it. He married Mark Rick's sister, yeah. Nikki. Yeah, plus they had a pretty good relationship through it all. Second down and a foot. Hand off. That's good for the first down after the 48-yard line. Now let's take a look back at the SEC moment presented by Sonic. The 1980 game between these two featured two of the greatest college running backs ever. Herschel Walker, 219 yards for Georgia, including this 76-yard run. And South Carolina's George Rogers, who added 165 yards on the day. But a late Rogers fumble down in the Georgia red zone proved the difference. And Georgia narrowly defeated South Carolina 13-10. Rodgers went on to win the Heisman Trophy. Georgia won the national championship. Shockley, with time, goes deep. And he's got Gibson down there. Knocked away by Dante Robinson. We've seen Robinson make two huge plays all alone on the island out there in single coverage. He knocked down a post pattern this time to go. It's one-on-one. -on -one. A little contact. But he does get a hand on the football. You can see him pushing a little bit, but a pretty good play by Dante Robinson. Again, the youngster out of Athens, Georgia. Now you can see Fred Gibson peering at the official, thinking he might get a call. It was not to be. So one of the differences is Robinson a little bigger than Ted Crawford. Robinson is six foot, 180 pounds, a little bigger than Teddy Crawford on the other side. Here's the toss to Musa Smith. And a fine defensive play by Sean Smith, number 96 at nose tackle. Now George Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner. That's Todd Ellis, the former South Carolina quarterback, standing doing play-by-play. -play. George, George Rogers. And in the middle, hidden by the post, is the basketball coach, Dave Odom, who uh, played a little quarterback in college. There's Dave. There's Dave. Wonder if he's scouting Fred Gibson. You're gonna have to figure a way to defend him this year. Todd Ellis, who was a quarterback of the great Joe Morrison teams here in the uh, mid to late 80s. Here's Fred Gibson, third and nine. I think if you're Charlie Strong right now, you rush three and you drop and you make DJ Shockley read the coverage and dump off the ball, but they're not even going to get it off. DJ Shockley unaware of the play clock, and it's going to back him up to a third down and 14 now. Columbia, South Carolina, a 50-minute lightning delay. The stoppage of play occurred midway through the first quarter. If you only rush three, you better have somebody spying DJ Shockley also in case he decides to tuck it and run. Now, they're showing blitz, but I bet they drop out of here. They do. They rush three. Here's Shockley going left, pulls up, fires deep, incomplete, one hopper. Nice defense. See, they drop eight into coverage. There's very few places to throw the football against eight guys dropping, and then they were able to flush him and make him throw on the move. Here's Terrence Edwards, who is uh, the second all-time receiver. He's yet to catch a pass in this game. This is the coverage. They show blitz, and then they only rush three. So there's eight guys. I mean, there's nowhere to throw underneath here. And then they flush him and make him make a bad throw. That's good defense. Terrence Edwards has been blanked just once in his Georgia career. That was last year against Florida. Brother Robert, of course, in the midst of a remarkable comeback off a very serious knee injury now with the Vikings. Here's Kilgo on fourth down. Brewer comes up, and he will. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a little dangerous. He looked a little close to yeah. that football. 44-yard punt. Ten minutes and 19 seconds remaining. Brewer says, I want to get away from here. Ten minutes, 19 seconds to go in this one. Georgia leading South Carolina 10-7. Corey Jenkins and the Gamecocks first down at the 12-yard line. Pinnock and Kenny Irons are the running backs. 
And here is the handoff to Kenny Irons. That's about a yard of a left tackle. Key thing for South Carolina here is they don't have to score on this drive, but they can't turn it over again. They've got to protect the football. Mark Richt, after uh, his team took a 10-0 lead, then uh, continued to lead 10-7, goes back to D.J. Shockley. I, I know you said they had a situation. Do they have a controversy yet? Well, no, I still don't think it's a controversy. I mean, it may be for the fans, but as long as David Green and D.J. Shockley are handling it, it's just only a situation. I just don't agree with it. I think when you made that switch now, you disrupt the continuity maybe that you had going, and you send a message to David Green that maybe you don't think he can get it done in the end. There's Jenkins with a stiff arm. And that stiff arm buys him four yards out to the 21-yard line. David Pollock injured on that last play will uh, get, stay on the bench. You know, those Ohio University people should have had some Polaroids taking pictures of the scoreboard with Florida beating or losing to OU 3-0. Take third, home to Athens. Third and one. And Pinnock does not pick up the first down. Now well, they got penetration. You know, I mean, he never really got a chance to build up any momentum, and that wasn't even close. Lou Holtz not happy. I mean, you've got the strength of your team is your offensive line. And just the push in there by Ken Veal, I think, was the guy who got the push right over the center. And he's a backup defensive tackle, but a 300-pounder, and he got great push that time and forces the punt. And so Tyler Dean on again. Damian Gary awaits the punt inside the 40-yard line. Not as good as he's been kicking. Nope. You see him coming off holding his helmet. Uh, South Carolina needed a good punt right there. 34 yards. David Green is back in the ball game, and Musa Smith, I think, needs to get back in the ball game. First half, 66 yards. Second half, only seven yards. He has been a non-factor. Here's the handoff up the middle to Musa Smith and picks up four to the 49-yard line. You know, I, I hate to belabor this point about the quarterbacks, but the other thing is those other 10 guys in the huddle, when, when you get into a tough situation like this, on the road, trying to win late in the ball game or preserve a win, those guys want to know the guy stepping in the huddle is going to lead them to the victory and is going to get it done. And sometimes when they don't even know which guy is going to step in that huddle, it, it, it's a little tough. Green is back in now, second down and six. And off right side, Musa Smith tackled by Jermaine Lemon, number 36. Well, the two quarterback system much discussed. Back in 94, Nebraska had uh, Tommy Frazier Brooks Berry. Well, that was a partially the, because yeah. of an injury. Well, that, that was the different one. Yeah, Frazier couldn't go because of the blood clots, and Beringer came in and did a great job, and they both played in the Orange Bowl, but uh and does anybody remember Major Applewhite and Chris Sims as Shockley is limping now? Maybe that's why he came out of the game. Here's Green. Hit as he lets it go. Man open. Good contact defensively. Teddy Crawford is the guy who made the play, but the pressure is what forced the bad throw. DeAndre Island came on a blitz and got to Green right as he threw it, and that caused the ball to be a little bit behind his receiver. Island with the pressure. Green not able to step right into this and see the ball's a little bit behind Gibson, and that enables Crawford to get in there and make the play. Big and stop. So it will be fourth down. And Kilgo to punt for the seventh time. Brewer will let this one go as well, out of bounds, and we'll see where the placement comes. This way, this way, this way. Keep coming. Stop. <laughs> right there. How do they do that? <laughs> hmm? But he was very precise and very authoritative. And it, it was so ruled by Steve Shaw that it was out of bounds at the 13 and a half yard line. Deucer did a triathlon this year. Yeah, so. swam in the Hudson. Yeah. And he's swimming today. <laughs> <laughs> Here's. Jenkins coming left. And do you see him covering up that ball? Both arms. I mean, I'm sure the directive from the sideline is, hey, we can win this football game unless we turn it over. If we turn it over, we're not going to have a chance to win it. 
And we've had two rain squalls move through here today. The first filled with lightning caused a 50 minute delay. The second just got a lot of people soaking wet. And uh, the pace continues for Lee Holtz. Second and five. 10 7. There's Jenkins behind his intended receiver, Thomas. Now turnovers have been a factor in this ballgame. Well, they were a factor last week for Carolina, seven of them. Today, three. A couple fumbles. And then this interception, but I mean, that was just David Pollock making a tremendous play. Georgia, the freshman turning it over, Tyson Browning, and then Fred Gibson turning it over on the hit. And right now it's third down and five, a three-point difference in the ball game. There's Ryan Brewer. Keep an eye on him. Comes the blitz, the pass. Oh my goodness, a little low. And uh, Ryan Brewer took a heck of a pop and lost his helmet. DeCorey Bryant, number 21, 22. Well, they tried to go to Ryan Bryant, Ryan Brewer, and it was a low ball. I mean, that's a hard catch to make. Reaching down to his feet. And then taking a serious shot on the head. He may feel that uh, about 2 o'clock this morning. Tyler Dean on the front deep to Damian Gary. Can't emphasize enough field position. Georgia is playing a field position game right now. This one returnable, Gary. But he called the fair catch. A 34-yard punt for the second time in succession. And today's Home Depot Scholar Athlete is C.J. Fry of South Carolina. C.J. graduated with a degree in business administration in three and a half years. Home Depot's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of South Carolina Scholarship Fund. C.J. Fry, whose dad, Curtis, is the track and field coach, both men's and women's here at South Carolina, and whose women's team won the NCAA championship last spring in Baton Rouge. Here is Musa Smith. Got a huge gaping hole at right tackle and moves down inside the 40, a pickup of 12 yards. Tim, thank you. 40 to nothing. Uh, 40 to nothing. The ball at the 40. <laughs> I don't think so. No. First and 10. Georgia trying to eat some clock now as well as get yards. Musa Smith. Now we saw DJ Shockley limping a moment ago. Let's get more from Jill Arrington on the sideline. Well, Vern, DJ Shockley is out of the game. He has an injury to his left ankle. They are icing it, and the medical staff has told me he is out. All right, Jill, thanks. 10-7. Shockley played for his dad, Don, College Park, just uh, near the, the Atlanta airport. He's a talented kid, you know, and it's a tough deal for Mark Rick. I mean, he was... DJ was one of the prime recruits in Mark Rick's first recruiting class. He inherited David Green. David Green played better than anybody would have guessed last year. He's got two guys that he thinks are both talented, and he both can win with both of them. Matter of fact, Mark Rick recruited DJ Shockley when Mark was at Florida State. DJ said it came down to Maryland, Georgia, or Florida State. Then Jim Donnan was fired. That eliminated Georgia, but Mark Rick was hired, and that brought Georgia back into the mix. Up the middle, J.T. Wall. A rare carry for the fullback. But a timely one. It's the first of the year. So rare that it caught South Carolina completely off guard. They're thinking toss to Musa. Watch this defense run out of here, and there goes the fullback right in the gap. They ran past it. John Stinchcomb, the All-American left tackle with a big block. And again, the running game now. Not only are they chewing up yardage, they're chewing up clock as we get ready to go under five minutes. After the 14-yard run, first down at the 15. And Green slips. Looks like he got his feet tangled yeah. with his center, Ian Knight. Got stepped on. Uh, Nishan, uh, it's Kevin Breedlove who's in at center now. Has moved over. Loss of three. There's Kevin Breedlove. They've had injury problems at uh, at center. And so Breedlove, the starting left guard, also moves over and serves as the center on occasion. 
Another South Carolinian. There's the ice on DJ Shaffer. One thing David Green's doing here, he's trying to use as much of the play clock as he can. Don't lose your momentum, but eat as much clock as you can. Smith had a busy day. Jermaine Lennon, number 36, with the tackle. Well, let's take a look at our CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Yards in the second half, 181 to 95 as Shockley heads to the locker room. Get complete game stats at CBSSportsLine.com or America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Third and 12. I think another key stat in this second half is that Georgia has started their average possessions on the third on their own 39 yard line. South Carolina on their own 11. And so as they keep exchanging punts in this low scoring game, Georgia keeps getting to play downhill and South Carolina is having to play uphill. And the biggest play of the game set up by that poor field position as South Carolina started at the four yard line and David Pollock made a brilliant interception off Corey Jenkins. You really have. Time now for the Fidelity Investment Scoring Recap. The first field goal came from Bennett in uh, before the rain delay. And here's the play of the game. David Pollock knocking the ball loose, then grabbing it for an interception and a touchdown. Ryan Brewer came back. This 25-yard pass to make it 10-7. But that's where we stand. And now a third down and 12. Mark Ricks, Georgia Bulldogs, trying to win for the first time in three years. They have lost the last two to the Gamecocks of South Carolina. And I'm sure he, he doesn't want to do anything foolish here, but a touchdown would be way better than a field goal. A field goal, you can still get beat with a touchdown and an extra point, but a touchdown makes South Carolina have to score twice with three minutes left. Stunts by the Gamecock defense. Green flips it out. It is caught by Edwards. His first catch of the game, but not enough for the first down. And Terrence Edwards hurt. Well, this works in favor of South Carolina. You never like to see a guy down with an injury, but the fact that the clock has stopped allows South Carolina to save one of their timeouts. They have two left. Here's Edwards trying to reach for that first down and just. Lands on the football. Ted Crawford with the tackle. And Terrence Edwards getting a little medical help. Time called. We'll be right back. I think it was the wind being knocked out of Terrence Edwards. He's going to trot off without assistance. One catch today. And Jill Arrington confirming from the sideline that it was just a wind knockout of Terrence Edwards. Now Billy Bennett's going to come on on fourth down and two. And attempt a field goal that would give Georgia nuts. Langston Moore blocked a field goal in the game last year. A critical play in the game. Here's Bennett. Up and through. 25 yard field goal for Billy Bennett. He struggled during two days, almost lost his job, but he came back with a game winner from 43 two weeks ago against Clemson, and he's just kicked his second here. Why do I get the feeling that Deion Sanders doesn't have the same clothing arrangement that we do? <laughs> You'd look good in that. <laughs> you would. <laughs> yeah. Gramps and blue plaid. <laughs> <laughs> Look like Daddy Warbucks. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> you know the only good news for South Carolina and Lou Holtz on that score is that because they're receiving a kickoff now and not a punt, they should get decent field position. Again, they've had to start an average position of their own 11 because Georgia's been able to punt them deep so much this second half. If they get a decent kickoff return, six points down, they should at least get the start in a different place in the field. Now we're getting set for the kickoff. Brett Kerouac, Farabee is the deep man of three for South Carolina. Six-point game. 
Taken by Brewer at the five. Got a little room. He fumbled. They got it back. At the 25. He fumbled last week on the kickoff return. Usually extremely reliable. And he fumbled again. You see Ryan Brewer, they had a nice return going. And a nice play in there by Derek Holloway, a backup linebacker, able to get his hand in on the football, but South Carolina able to recover. That looks to be Brewer, who is still down. And while time has been stopped, let's check in on the Florida score. Here's Tim once again. Okay, fellas. I know it's early, and I know there was a rain delay, but watch this. Ernest Graham coughs up the football. Dennis Tuklameka picks it up for the Bobcats of Ohio. Now, they were stopped on downs, but it's still 3-0 Ohio over Florida. Vern? Timmy, I think uh, what that does is provide the Ohio fans with another opportunity yeah. to take a picture of the scoreboard. Another Kodak moment. First and ten. Here's Jenkins. Caught ages up at the 49-yard line. Nice play by Corey Jenkins. Does just enough to get away from the defense. And instead of running, he's got his eyes downfield, seeing if something opens up. And on the run, makes a nice throw to Michael Ages, who does a nice job on the end of that play, holding on to it. That's a gain of 24. The clock starts again now after the chain has been reset. First down at the 49. Three wides, right side, one left. Jenkins under pressure, has it tipped. And Pinnock cannot hold on. And it is in come. Please. And it's David Pollock again. I mean, this guy has been all over the field. He's had eight tackles. He's had two tackles for loss. And here he is again, pressuring Corey Jenkins into a quick throw. It goes off the helmet of Darius Swain. And Andrew Pinnock probably should have just knocked that thing down. You know, instead of doing anything with it, just beat that thing down to the ground. Corey Jenkins, 232 total yards now, second down. And 10, here's a quick strike after the right side to Thomas, but look at the Georgia defenders. A quartet closed on him. So it'll bring up a big third down. And this is two down territory now. So, I mean, they're thinking we've got two downs to convert here. We're under two minutes. South Carolina with two timeouts left. So they don't have to panic here, but they do need to keep their tempo up pretty good. Third and seven. Andre Goss, who was on the field for the last play, comes to the bench. Matthew Thomas back on the field. Each team, two timeouts left. At the 49, three-man Georgia rush. Jenkins has it sail on him, almost picked off by Greg Blue. David Pollock again. He was the one who was in there and forced the play. Now they have Jeff Barnes in there. Number 52 is the new right tackle. And Jeff Barnes doesn't do any better against David Pollock. Could have been caught for holding. He gets in there and forces the bad throw. And what you see with David Pollock is he is a guy who is getting off the ball very quickly. He's anticipating the snap. He's got a great burst off the ball. We know he's got the high motor and he plays hard. And uh, he, is, he is really playing well for Georgia's defense. Injured players, Matthew Thomas, the wide receiver for South Carolina. Gets an assist. The tough thing about that is uh, he, ha he hasn't had a big game, but he is one of the guys that can at least threaten the Georgia defense. And with him coming out of the game, it limits the options for Corey Jenkins. And I'm sure Brian Van Gorder right now is telling his team, keep an eye on 21. Make sure you account for Ryan Brewer. Don't let him beat us in the middle of the field. Fourth and seven with 1.32 to go. And Carolina trailing by six. Again, Georgia brings three. Jenkins feeling a little pressure from the backside. Delivers. There's Brewer. First down at the 22. That's homeboy. That, that's an Ohio guy. I mean, I'm proud of the guy. He is a football player. 
I mean, they are down on their weapons. They just don't have many weapons. And he does a nice job of crossing the field, and Jenkins able to find him in traffic on the other side of the formation, and South Carolina still alive. He's gotten beat around, he's gotten knocked around, he's got a bum ankle, and he's out there playing ball. And he's caught seven for 106 yards, that one for 25. Here's Jenkins, lobs it, screen pass, Pinnock got a couple of blocks to the 11-yard line. Again, clock stops on a first down. They still have two timeouts, so there is a no-panic situation for Corey Jenkins. And again, he's 26 years old, but he's not been a starting quarterback at the University of South Carolina very long. And so this is a new situation for him. And he has to manage this game right now as the clock starts up again. Holtz continues to pace. First and 10, Thomas is wide right. Three men flood the left side. With two timeouts, any running play is still in play here for South Carolina. Here's Jenkins to the seven yard line. Timeout. Gamecocks take the timeout with 36 seconds to go. They have a second down and they trail by six. Second down and six at the seven yard line. Carolina trailing by six with one timeout left. Well, the key thing, that's the key thing for Corey Jenkins, who I really think is, I mean, he has really shown some stuff in the second half. I mean, he has really improved, but he's got that one timeout in his back pocket, so he doesn't have to force anything here. Second down and six. He's a running threat. Andrew Pinnock in the backfield, a running threat. And Ryan Brewer, number 21, a threat anywhere. He's in the slot to the left. Gauze and Ages also split left. And Thomas, top of the screen to the right side. Second down. Here's Jenkins with a lot of time. Pressure now comes from the back. It's Pollock. Jenkins out of bounds to stop the clock at the four-yard line. Did a nice job of getting out of bounds. Again, saving that timeout. Lots of time left with 29 seconds. At the four-yard line. And they can get a first down. So, I mean, they, they've got probably third and it's third down three at the four-yard line. They can the get a first down without scoring. Put yourself inside the minds of Skip Holtz. What do you think here? I think they might run this one and then use that timeout if they don't get the first down or if they don't score. This might be a good time for a quarterback draw from Corey Jenkins. Pinnock to the right. Jenkins gets a block on Pollock. Pulls up, runs. He's going to be very close for the first down. They got to call timeout. I don't think they got the first down, but they've got to call timeout. Have not yet, nor have they. Now they have. And that is the final timeout of the game for the Gamecocks. They tried to roll him out a little bit, and there's that guy again, David Pollock, who's in hot pursuit. He almost trips up Corey Jenkins. The ball's body the two and you see line. Jenkins it's never afraid to stick his nose in the there, ball. but because he stumbled a little bit, he didn't have a full head of steam going towards that goal line. They did not make the first down, so it's fourth down and one now on the two-yard line. Well, it was a year ago, South Carolina, Georgia, the opening kickoff, Derek Watson, 66 yards. That eventually led to one of only two touchdowns. The second game with 122 left, Phil Petty completed a 16-yard pass to Brian Scott, giving the Gamecocks a 14-9 victory and a second straight win over the Bulldogs. The other thing about that is that Georgia had a first and goal on the one in that game. A couple penalties moved the ball back, and they had to settle for a 27-yard field goal to go up 10 to uh, whatever, one up by three, and South Carolina able to come right back and answer with a touchdown to win the football game. Fourth and one at the two. A 13-7 game with 20 seconds to go. And a 26-year-old quarterback playing on a field that's only two miles from the house in which he lived when he grew up. Here's Jenkins. Option play. Pinnock. Fumble. A fumble. Another South Carolina fumble.
David Pollock. They went with the option. And Pinnock is the pitch man. I don't think it was a bad pitch. It was a good pitch. Andrew Pinnock, I think, was eyeing the goal line and not the football. David Pollock there on the play, but I don't think this was a bad pitch. Mm. Turnovers, unbelievable. And Lou Holtz, I mean, he just, you saw him on the sideline last week in Charlottesville. The turnover's eating at him, and again, fourth down, they go to the option. Pollock is the guy they're optioning. He forces the pitch, and it's a good pitch. I mean, that one's on Andrew Pennick. Because Corey Jenkins, he's got to come down the line, and whatever David Pollock does, that determines whether he keeps the ball or pitches it. And Pollock made him pitch. Third fumble lost by South Carolina in the game. Second <laughs> one inside the five-yard line. And David Pollock and the Georgia defenders help Georgia prevail. They win it by a count of 13 to 7. Fourth and one at the two. The option pitch goes to Andrew Pinnock. And Lou Holtz just went from 65 years of age to 73. Georgia prevails 13 to 7 in a game delayed at the outset by 50 minute lightning in the area. And the player of the game, this one unanimous, yeah. David Pollock, one interception for a touchdown, one fumble recovery, eight tackles, number 47, defensive end Georgia, player of the game. Let's check in with Jill Arrington. Coach Rick, you've got to be proud of your defense. They won this game for you tonight. That fumble recovery just now. Were you proud of the way they played today? Well, defense and kicking game. Right now, that's about all we can do. Offensively, we got uh, so many things to straighten out. I can't even begin to uh, say what we got to do there, but very thankful for uh, the victory, and uh, I'm very, very proud of that defense. And how about that Polak interception in the end zone? Well, it's David Pollock, and I think people are going to learn what kind of ball player he is. He's got a heart of a lion. I'm really proud of that kid. What are you going to work on offensively to try to get some more consistency he head, heading forward? Well, I think we need to work on everything offensively. Thank and how you. about DJ Shockley? How's he feeling? Uh, Shockley has got something with his foot that uh, he can barely walk now. I don't know how serious it is. We'll have to get an x-ray to find out. All right, Coach. Thanks right, a lot. Thank Congratulations. You. All right, the Georgia Bulldogs, they won four in a row on the road last year. The streak goes to five under second-year head coach Mark Richt. Play the game right here. David Pollock, the interception, and the touchdown. Boy, South Carolina, I mean, they're going to be on themselves tonight. I mean, two times inside the five-yard line, no points. Three fumbles lost in this game. That goes with seven turnovers in a loss last week. The biggest play, David Pollock's interception off Corey Jenkins in the end zone. It was a 13-7 win for Georgia in a rainstorm in Columbia. For Jill Arrington, Todd Blackledge, I'm Vern Lundquist. We'll see you next week from Knoxville, Florida, and Tennessee.